Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Night Student Loan Justice or live stream. Uh, my name is Alan Collins. If you're new to the group, welcome. We're very glad that you found us. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to get right into it. It's been a very busy week. A couple of announcements. Um, we were featured yesterday at the Majority Report. So if you go to Majority Report Radio or something, you can find it. Just Google it. Um, Strong interview, actually. I'm very happy with it. Uh, um, also, change.org is looking for short video submissions from people uh, talking about our petition, which is up to 840,000 signatures now, talking about uh, our petition and how canceling student loans would affect their lives. So it's definitely worth doing um, for promotional purposes and whatnot. So I hope everybody had a good week. There's a whole bunch of other stuff going on, but we've got so much to pack in tonight. I'll just get right to it. Uh, so we're with here. We are here tonight with filmmaker Mike Kamoin uh, of Videos for Change. We've been working on a film for three and a half years now. Uh, we did a town hall about it. Uh, was it last week with Matt Taibbi of Rolling Stone magazine and um, getting very excited about this film. So. Mike is with us tonight, and we also have a very special guest, one of the, the stars of the film, Linda Navarro, who, like me, is just a normal person with student loans, uh, but she decided to speak out, and that is just so important for all of us. You know, in many ways, we're all we've got, but we're all we need as well. So with that, I will hand it off to Mike, and let's do this. Alan, thanks for having me on uh, again. Uh... Friday night. I look forward to this uh, Friday nights, and I hope others uh, are too. Um, and I'm really pleased to have Linda Navarro with us. And uh, Linda, could you tell us a little bit about you know your story with student loans? And again, thanks for being on with us. Well, everybody, every uh, single student loan borrower has a story, and every single one of those stories is valuable, important, and I think everybody has a lot to offer. For me. I think one of the most important things that I offer is <laughs> I'm 30 years, 30 years suffering in this. And um, that's a lot that there's a message in that. Uh, um, I uh, really have had no, no vision. I, I've been lost in this. I started out with 20,000, owing 20,000, and it literally grew into the cost of my parents' home. It went up to 50, 60. 145,000 with the um, estimated payback of 214,000. I'm 69 years old. Um, uh, this is not about not paying a bill. This is about a crooked lending system that 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 makes you stuck in inside a financial ruin of quicksand. And that's how I feel. No, it's not how I feel. It's what is. I ha I I really had to grow from saying this is how I feel. I feel cheated, I feel this happened. No, I was cheated. I feel cheated out of freedom, 100%. Because now at 30 years, I'm still stuck. And, and I really wanna, more than anything, offer this, this harm, this vision of doom that people need to understand happens in this. And, and, and I really believe very deeply that the more we get people to speak about what's harming them, the better we are and closer we are to doing something about this. Um, I believe we will, I really do. So Linda, I wanna ask you a question. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your background. Um, you, you've, had, you've worked, applied yourself in serving our country. Yes, I did. I, I uh, did not serve in war. I served um, during the Vietnam era and I, um, I was working with the hospital corps and I loved it. You know, I, I was contributing. It was, it was a wonderful tour of duty. I was attracted to the Navy because of the GI Bill that I had at that time. Um, and and I, I loved being a part of the military. Uh, the Navy, you know, it, um, you know, the, the Navy can be hard too, but, but I, I love the camaraderie. And, um, at that time it was a great feeling for me when I left and returned back to my home state, uh, life got hard because I had this new label. 
it should be a good label, but it hurt me is being a veteran. You know, uh, we have uh, hard times. We really do. Uh, um, we're not we're not treated well. And I made a complaint one day about degrading treatment, and I paid a price for that. I was promised indignity for life. It's a long story, but it was a huge government force that came after me. And when at exact same time that I started my master's degree. So long story short, the master's degree was ruined. I want to bring Alan on. Alan, um, is Linda, Linda's story unique or do you have other military uh, members of student loan justice who have been caught up in these toxic loans? Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, um, military people, both active duty and retired veterans, some of the worst hit, believe it or not. You know, people talk about the GI Bill all day long. You know, the GI Bill only goes so far. And we're getting stories from people across the country who uh, both undergraduate and graduate, maybe they got called out in the National Reserve uh, maybe they got deployed overseas and left their loved ones in charge of their accounts and things went sideways. Um, maybe after they served, they um, got roped into going one, to one of these for-profit uh, um, career colleges that just completely screwed them under these loans. And, um, you know, there is some special legislation that is supposed to help veterans, uh, particularly if they're on deployment, but, you know, um, this system does not discriminate, fortunately or unfortunately, and people in the armed services, just because of their lifestyles, typically, are getting hurt far, far worse uh, than many others. You know, we've got an Air Force captain in the group, and he originally borrowed like $26,000, and 15 years later, he was being done for $235,000. And, you know, the lenders were very happy to take him through every nook and cranny of his loan history to explain to him why he owed the money. But um, at the end of the day, he still owed the money like everybody else. And so I would just urge everybody out there with, uh, you know, military um, uh, pedigree, don't be ashamed because it's not just you. It's a ton of people in uniform. And you know what, uh, Tony Fiorentino pointed out last week, and I'm hoping that we can do this where we build upon everyone's experience each week. What Tony Fiorentino talked about, it's not just the individual borrower. This is about a systemic problem. This is, this is about the entire lending system. That, so it's, it's not a problem that individuals brought upon themselves or created, but it's that you walked into this systemic problem and you had no idea that it was set up this way and um, so let's just go to the current events of this week. Um, crazy Aunt Betsy DeVos, what is she up to? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> Linda, I, I what do you think? Be, I said it because when I first, I happened to see her on, uh, actually on Fox and then saw many other pieces about her. And clearly I was sitting in my chair and I, I, I had to stop eating my breakfast and, and watch this lady. <laughs> because it made me angry because it was everything that she was leaving out. It, it, you know, it would be different if she said a little piece and then she added the rest of the story. She left so much out. She left the harm. She left the, 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 the crookedness and the corruption of the lending system. She left how people are suffering. It was only about the borrower, the borrower, the borrower, what the borrower has done, what the borrower has not done what 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 you know how unfair it is to the other people because of the bar or the bar you know i i was angry at that because is it's not about the bar <laughs> you know it's not about what what we're what we've done or haven't done or that we i heard somebody say we're we're bad in math you know where's the rest of the equation here you know a lot of people are bad in math is they're leaving out the rest and I was angry. I was very, it was hard to hear her. Alan, what was yeah. your reaction to um, crazy Aunt Betsy DeVos? You know, Betsy DeVos saying it's not fair to the people who already paid their loans 
She sounded much like a southern plantation owner in 1865 as they were getting ready to free the slaves. I'm sure many uh, wealthy landowner was like, well, you know, now that just wouldn't be fair to those boys that came ahead and worked their whole lives in bondage. It wouldn't be fair to them to free the slaves. You know, that's exactly what I heard when I heard those comments from Betsy. And by the way, when it comes to getting free stuff, you don't get to be a double diamond, triple platinum member of the Amway Corporation as whatever the highest level is, I'm sure she is, seeing as how her family owns Amway. You don't get to that level and not know a lot about getting a lot of free stuff. Um, and to that point, most people with student loans, 80% or more in this pandemic, probably 90%, we're not looking for free stuff. We're looking to get back to zero in most cases. And so I take great issue with this nonsense that uh, Betsy DeVos is uh, putting out there. We've got a quick comment from one of our members, Mary, if I could just throw this out there. Yeah. Um, so Mary Weaver says, uh, my husband is a veteran. And while they use his income to decide my payments amount, they won't let uh, me, they won't allow me any benefits because they say they are my loans. I was unaware of that. Linda, what do you make of that, of Mary's, um, her, her statement here? That, that they won't do anything for her? That I'm they won't sorry. allow her any benefits because of the, they say the loans are in her name, although they use her husband's income to determine what her monthly payments are. Any bureaucratic move that the lending side can make to benefit them, they will do. Anything they can do to not cancel loans, they will do. Uh, the Department of Education jettisoned any pretense and, and its crony contractors like Sally May and Navy and FIA, Fed Loan Servicing and others. They will do whatever they can to benefit themselves and screw the borrower 100% of the time. And that's it's not just veterans. I'm sure that happens with, with everybody. So. No, it isn't just veterans. And if I could just say, if I may, that, you know, even for me, I'm a veteran. I'm proud. I, I, I know what I did when I, when I served. Um, I'm saddened. I, I, I don't expect anything, never expect anything from anybody. What I did expect was to not be harmed. I expected to not be harmed. And I'm disappointed in all of the things that I faced that harm my life. That, you know, if, if I could have just gotten away with just don't harm me. And now at the age of 69, as a veteran, as an American, American veteran, it is because a lot of people separate, they say the veterans here, but they're not American. We are Americans, you know? And it's to say to just don't harm, they, they don't get it. And the worst offenders, the government, you know, we're, we're, we're not human and, and nobody cared about my education. My education was burned. You know, no one cared about it. I'm sure Betsy, you know, I would love for Betsy. I would love for Betsy to tell me, what about dignity? What about how I was thrown in trash? How my education was burned? You, you know, the details don't have to be there. Just the fact that I'm an American citizen who just happened to serve this country, you know, and it's very hard. I, you know, I, I speak for the veterans very deeply in this for all Americans. So, uh, Linda, do, do you think Betsy DeVos spent time um, in the military forces? Heck no. No. I, Alan, I, I, Alan do, do you think she spent any time in the military forces? No, obviously she didn't. I know that her family has been holding significant stock ownership in a number of student loan collection companies in the country. I do know that. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so she's making her living off of defaulted loans to some degree. Would you say that, or, or um, how you know how how is she generating revenue there? Well, her family is a behemoth. They're a, a multi-billion-dollar uh, affair. So, among their other stock holdings in, in that is uh, stock, and I believe it was uh, oh, I don't want to mention the name, but one of the major student loan collection companies. She said during her confirmation hearings that she was going to divest herself uh, of those, but I never saw any confirmation that she actually did that. Oh, okay. You know, it really doesn't matter because if that's where the family was making money going in, 
you can imagine what their proclivities were in office. And by the way, as Secretary of Education, she was a disaster. She gave the keys to the hen house to the fox. You know, the, her, one of her first moves was to take on uh, special interest uh, career education lobbyists and make them her, you know, personal special advisors. So she was taking her marching orders from the student loan swamp from the get-go. And her most recent comments are just more swamp uh, rhetoric. And, you know, this is failed bankers rhetoric at this point, people. We don't have to take the shit, pardon my French. But, you know, 80% of all borrowers were never going to be able to repay their loans, even before the pandemic. So we are, we can shut this lending system down by popular unconsent if we have to, and we may have to, uh, but so, don't be cowed or intimidated by people, people like Betsy DeVos or the other swamp defenders that we're seeing in the media right now trying to shut us down. Uh, this week, also in the media, Matt Taibbi came out uh, with a, a story. Uh, Linda, I don't know if you you saw it, but I'm going to throw this to Alan first. Uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, what his uh, latest article is and sort of summarize it for uh, all of us? Yeah, Matt has been one of the best reporters in the past seven, eight, nine, ten years on this topic. Uh, he's featured us many times. So yesterday, he published a piece about one of our members, Chris, who had borrowed $79,000 to date, and this is 20 or 30 years ago, much like Linda, um, to date has repaid nearly $200,000 on the $79,000 loan, but he still owes $240,000. What? And so oh that, that yeah. just felt it was quite important to highlight oh. this guy, Chris. And by the way, you know, as far as the ratios are concerned, we hear ratios like that all the time. People have repaid more than double what they borrowed and still owe sometimes far more than double what they borrowed. Amazing. This is what happened. Yeah. Linda, as a Navy yeah. vet, when you hear numbers like that, does that remind you of your situation? 100% that you just, you're, you're, that's the doom. You, you, how do you get, how do you look past that? You can't, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a vision of doom that, that, that there's no, there's nothing forward. There's nothing behind you. There's like a sideways. How do you, it's, it's like you're on, you're a hamster on a wheel that you just keep going around and around, and there's no purpose. There's no, I, I just don't. It's, it, it, it saddens me, and and I, you know, I, it, it, it just saddens me deeply. Are you, are you willing, are you willing yeah. to talk a little bit about your numbers? I don't know if you gave them earlier or if you could just go over them because it sounded kind of so similar. Yeah. My own. You're talking about my 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 loan. Yeah. Yeah, um, like I said, I uh, I started out at at, at twenty thousand. I was paying the interest on the loan uh, until uh, the, the I, I faced the retaliation I did, and then uh, um, I uh, because they they attacked the livelihood, I couldn't I, I couldn't buy shampoo, much less pay the loan. So I went into poverty. I was in literally in poverty. And um, I, I could only pay very little. The minimum just kept hiking up the loan and get, getting higher and higher, 1.1500 um, uh, were you at this When you were in poverty, were you already a veteran or did you, or, or did you become part of the military service? No, I, was, I had already returned back to my home state and, and I uh, was already a, a, a veteran and I was uh, working on, my, I just started my master's degree and, and I was doing okay. That's the thing is I was okay. I, I had a nice apartment. I had, I had, uh, I was just turned 39. I was, um, I had waited and I said, wait a minute, you know, I want to go back to school. Um, everybody's doing it and I want to complete my master's. I, I'm, I, I have to say to you, I regret it. I regret going back to school, I regret ever taking out a loan, regret, regret even thinking about going back to school. If I had just not gone back to school, this is me now, my life would have been different. I would have never worked with the government. I would have never been promised indignity for life. I would have never had my education burned. I, 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 I would have been okay. I, was, I had a, a car, I had life at that time. Immediately when my, uh, 
when when my my education burned six months later the loan pops up and that's it i couldn't pay it you know and and i was devastated that's how how my world went i turned into tom hanks from castaway i turned into tom hanks you know where where there was no vision i mean that man had no the movie was brilliant and i related to it i called it my student loan because he had no vision and then what did he do when he was in that vision of doom? Well, that's me. I didn't have a ball, but I, 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 I had no vision of, of life. It, it, I'm, I'm Tom Hanks and I'm still waiting to get on the raft. It's my mission to get on the raft and have the water thrown at my feet that I will, will come alive. I, I, I try to find a humor in it, but but that movie does describe the vision of doom that you're in. You, you, you're blind. You, you have no, you, you well, I want to pick up on that. I want to pick up on that because that speaks to the, uh, the isolation, mm -hmm. uh, the abandonment, mm -hmm. the idea yes. that uh, you, you may never get back to normal. Yes. yes. Um, and that, you know, when he does finally return, his life, you know, other players in his life have moved on. Correct. So Correct. Correct. That, that was like a second doom that well, he how experiences. How, yes, yes, uh, yes. So I, I love that movie. I actually have a copy of it. So, so thank you so much for bringing that up. And and maybe we can reach out to Tom Hanks and, and get him involved. Um, Alan, uh, response or reaction to Linda's story and how it ties into the Taibi article? You know, I too, interestingly, have a Tom Hanks reference. <laughs> My own personal experience, I felt a bit more like Joe versus the volcano. I felt like there was a brain <laughs> cloud in my head. And if people have seen the movie, they, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, we do have a comment here from Johnny Sim. Uh, he left a number of comments. I will Wait, leave off the, let's hit him. the, prof the profane ones. Um, no, but no, he says, everything in. I don't care. Everything gets Well, done. okay. He says, what the actual F? I am dealing with them. Sally May, USA nightmare. Uh, well, that's my loans too. So obviously we're sort of preaching to the choir tonight. Um, well, no, it's, it's not. We're not preaching. We're just, we're actually trying to, in my opinion, we are sharing, we have to share an experience before we can move forward because people have to know that they are not alone. Now, Linda, when we first met and you were introduced and you volunteered to come forward, right. you were right. not this talkative. No. <laughs> now. What, no. what sort of helped you? Um, uh, Cause this was a really, really, what you described is a really heavy weight that you had on for 30 years. What's been the benefit if you don't mind of, of our discussions related to the documentary and your personal growth or story? 100%. When, first of all, when I, when I found you, it was, uh, I, I'm, very, I'm very determined. I think that's what kept me above water these 30 years. Uh, that's how I found you. I was so determined. I always kept searching. And um, when we first met, um, and you said, you know, we could do a, a, a piece on, on camera. I was scared to death. I was scared to death. I, I thought, I, I, I don't know how to do this. Uh, can I really articulate this? And um, even though I always had the voice, because it's, it, it's my life, it's what's harmed me. If I don't speak for my life, then, then, then what do I have? So I always had the voice, but I didn't I, I got very nervous, I think, in the beginning, and I, I didn't know how to put it together. It was inside, but I, somehow I just, I, I froze for the moment. But I have to tell you, that when was that? Like seven, eight months ago? I totally different person today. Um, I um, oh, thank God. I've been so I've been so isolated for so many years. Not in, as far as no contact with people. I certainly have contact, but isolated in this there's a difference i'm isolated in the pain you feel different you don't feel like you're like anybody else which is a part of that isolation and then when you start to talk about it you don't know you know uh, 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 what it is is somebody hearing me is somebody caring and that changed me to meet you to 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 know um alan um to have a connection to to know how huge this is the movement the documentary, enormously proud to be in it. 
enormously proud to be a part of it. I spent 30 years hoping, wishing for someone to talk to me. And, and it took 30 years. It's 30 years too late, but better late than never. For the amount of people that I reached out to in 30 years, from presidents to congressmen to legislators to mayors to everybody, nobody responded to me but you two. <laughs> so I'm like, it, it became a gift of gab for me that I didn't have I didn't have before, and you can't shut me up now. You say video to me, I tell, I say, tell me what it is. Uh, I may struggle a bit trying to get things together, um, putting my computer together, my, but I, I have, I'm so committed to this because this is my life and I share this with so many other people. They are my strength. The other 44 million people, they're my strength and I wanna be there. Believe me, because that's the only thing that will move this, that will move us from Tom Hank on the on the on, on the desert island onto that raft. That's how I feel. It's amazing, but but you can't shut me up now. <laughs> so I, I'll interrupt then. Uh, Alan, <laughs> the student loan justice has been a life raft of just uh, trying to pull people, you know, in. Uh, and he, you, you, on your website, you request people to put their stories. Um, um, how, how does it feel to you to hear Linda's story and th that she's committed to this and hopefully others are too? Well, you know, we've been seeing a groundswell, Mike. People are finally, finally, after 16 years of doing this, people are like, wait a minute, I don't have to put up with this nonsense. It's not just me. And it's more than 50% of all borrowers are going to default on their loans. In fact, my best guess is it's close to 80% at this point, and that was before the pandemic. So not only are you not alone, we are the majority of all student loan borrowers. So the, this is the biggest elephant in any room that I could imagine. But you know, finally, people are finally starting to throw these chains of silence off of themselves. You know, on that note, we have another comment here from Patricia. Yeah. I just want to get real quick. Yeah, please. Um, so Patricia uh, Matheny says, I'm in a loan forgiveness program. I have to make 120 payments. But what sucks is each year the loan payment goes up. It's like when I get ahead, the payment goes up. Yeah. And, you know, maybe my, my, my quick two cents there is that, Patricia, the bad news about all of these forgiveness programs is that unfortunately the department of education has no desire or intentions of canceling any loans. So it sounds like you're in public service uh, loan forgiveness. And the sad fact is that 99% of all borrowers are being disqualified out of that program. And not only are their payments probably going up during the term, but their balances are increasing significantly. So that, you know, maybe year eight, nine or 10, all of a sudden they get the bad news that, oh, no, your payments didn't count or we have to disqualify you for this, that, the other reason. And believe me, the Department of Education has many, many avenues to disqualify people out of all of these repayment programs. Um, you're going to be kicked to the curb. Statistically speaking, the odds are great, 99%, that people will be kicked out and kicked to the curb owing far more than had they never tried in the first place. Alan, I'm uh, reading, uh, and this message is for you, Linda. Look, you just uh, helped somebody. Mary uh, Weaver, thank you so much, Linda. I understand completely. I spent years being embarrassed about being 59 and having 213,000 of student loan. Wow. Wow. This is why we're going to do this. Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You, you you, you get strength and you don't feel alone in this. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So um, let's see, we covered crazy Aunt Betsy DeVos. We covered uh, Matt Taibbi's great article. Um, just want to touch base a little bit and backtrack, uh, Alan, where you started with is on November 20th, we did the student loan debt crisis town hall with Matt Taibbi. And uh, for those that may be listening now, we'll, we'll add a link, but uh, that is still available. Um, and it's a 52 minute uh, powerhouse of, of people we've met along the journey. Uh, Linda, did you get a chance to watch the- I uh, did, I did. Uh, I, I was so 
so in tune to everybody on it. I, I really have, I have to say in the documentary, I've just fallen in love with everybody and how they speak and, and, and to hear voices like Tom Borgers I, I, and Catherine and Maite Eby and Alan, you know, to, to uh, and there was another one and I forgot, I think it was, I forgot who he was, the professor, um, when he said that, you know, this is slavery. You know, you, you're, 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 you're hearing voices come back uh, um, because you're, you're being educated and understanding that you are not alone and that people actually care about this. To hear Tom Burgess say, remember he said that he, he's dealt with the FBI, he's dealt with millionaires, he's dealt with all these people. When he speaks with the, about the student loan, nobody responds. And that connected me to him. It made me feel, my God, uh, I thought that was just me that nobody responded to. <laughs> Here's this man. <laughs> that's huge and and people are doing that to him and so it's all important to hear i i love catherine um i i just think uh the world of her i feel like i know these people by hearing how they've talked of course alan i'm always so educated you know i, I feel like i i have these newfound friends and and that's important it's super it's unbelievably important you know i don't feel alone you know, right. just, just for our audience's benefit, I think most people probably know Matt Taibbi, Rolling Stone writer, who's part of the town hall. Uh, Tom Borgers was the key federal investigator on behalf of Congress into the subprime home mortgage crisis in 2008. It's featured top story on 60 Minutes. Catherine Austin Fitz is a former board member of Sally May. Hey. So you can imagine how strong this town hall was, folks. Um, I only wish we could have gotten people like Ralph Nader on there as well. But, um, you know, very strong town hall. I urge everybody uh, to check it out. Well, maybe we'll get Ralph, we'll get Ralph to uh, join us one Friday evening. But certainly, um, you know, Alan, all those people you mentioned are in the documentary. And uh, a decision that we made, rather than try to consolidate and compress and make our documentary live within a 90 minute structure, which is typical of say a Sundance documentary. Um, we're actually going to make it longer. Um, we're going to make a six part documentary series and it'll be over well over three hours, all six parts, because we want everybody to hear um, and not have to live within a box. We're going to still have to edit hours and hours of stuff out. Uh, right. But we want people to be able to talk and we want people to go into this. Uh, and, and Alan, uh, um, I'm working with uh, my editors, uh, Tracy Kring and her husband, John. And um, boy, we covered a lot of ground in three and a half years. I mean, we're in New York, we're in Boston, we're in DC, we're in Ohio, we're in hickory valley tennessee uh you are everywhere in your van um across the country and what a great story we have to tell uh and salt lake city don't forget that oh right right yes salt lake city <laughs> no we we're, we can't do this alone um and so uh but we want to work we want to encourage everybody to work together moving forward we may not share political views but we can all share that this system is not something that's going to be good for my kids and my wife and I, and it's not good for you. And it's not certainly, uh, uh, we want Linda to enjoy, you know, the rest of her life and everybody else who's carrying these kinds of loans. So uh, we got to act quickly. Now's the time. You know, Mike mentions we're a, 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 a nonpartisan group. And uh, towards that end, uh, a couple of days ago, we were featured on uh, the majority report, which is pretty left-leaning Today, we did an interview with a radio station in Connecticut, WTIC, and that podcast will be coming out soon. And the more media that people out there can generate for us, the better. We're willing to do interviews with any and all media, from Rush Limbaugh to Rachel Maddow. And what works best is when uh, the people out there call their local news stations and say, hey, you should really interview this guy about this problem, the student loan problem, about the petition they're doing, uh, about the film that they're about to release. And that really gets the ball rolling, so. Guys, can we talk? My name is Linda Navarro. I'm 69, a Naval veteran. 
and one of the 44 million student loan borrowers impacted by a predatory lending system. Many of you share my experience of what it's like to survive inside the injustice of a corrupt lending system. For me, it's over 30 years. This needs to end, but it won't if we don't take action, educate all borrowers and consumers who know the harm too well. No one will solve this problem for us, not the government, not the lenders, not the universities. So it's up to you and me. We all know someone suffering in silence over predatory student loan debt. Tell your friends, tell everyone you know, get your mother to get your friend's mother, get everybody's mother to tell every friend they have that knows anybody suffering in student loan debt. We need every voice. Every voice will count. We need to join our voices and end the harm now. This corrupt lending system has ruined millions of lives and tragically lives have been lost in this. We are American citizens that had a dream of education. We ended up being used, harmed and deliberately ignored. Give whatever you can, donate whatever you can, give something, share your story and we must finish telling your story. Help complete the significant documentary, Scared to Death, America's Student Loan Scam. Donate. Together, we can lift these shackles from our shoulders and win. All right. I hope that it is dawning on you all that, you know, we're kind of all we've got in this fight, but at the same time, we're all that we need. You know, 44 million people is larger than California. It's larger than all the armies, standing armies on earth combined. So the quicker that we can spread the word about this group, about our petition at change.org slash cancel student loans, um, most importantly about this film, uh, the more quickly we will come together and we can get this problem solved tomorrow, folks. These are student loans we're talking about. This isn't nuclear launch codes or uh, pandemic, nothing of the sort. These, we, we should be able to squash this bug in a fortnight when we get even 10% of the people who need to be with us, with us. Alan, everybody we've talked to, from Ralph Nader, Tom Borgers, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz, Bob Hildreth, uh, you name it. It's, it's really about everybody coming together, holding together and holding the line on fairness in student loans. And um, the more we can, uh, we can act as one, boy, that does create change. Just like you said, uh, you know, this is not nuclear science. Uh, you, you, you know aerospace, this is not that. Um, uh, Linda, you know, your home right now is, is decorated beautifully. Um, for years though, you've told me that Christmases and the holidays are hard. Every single holiday, I was always sitting in a corner searching, always searching for somebody, for something. I would, never, I would, I would never it, it, have the whole holiday where I could enjoy it. I'd have to search. I wasn't at peace until somebody responded to me. And this holiday, I, I, I feel comfort. I want others to feel comfort, even though they, they may have not connected with you yet. That if they, if they just connect, if they stay connected to this, that that there's something there is power in in numbers and all of us joining together i've never um felt this connected and i it helps me have hope it does it, it that's my wilson ball if you will that's that's my it's become my wilson ball it's become my hope and and it's made me feel better it's made me feel um to come out of doom and, and I want any, that was the hardest me in the holidays that I would always feel, remember the doom. And this, this holiday, I, I'm not in that doom because I've, I know so many in this. And I want to know, you know, the more, all that can come through it. It's nice to hear a name, a name like Mary. You know, now I know somebody named Mary, you know, and she knows me, even though we don't know each other personally, we do. 
you know, because we're in this together and, and I'm not as alone. I'm not. Anything's better than the isolation that I felt in these 30 years. Thank you, Linda. I know I put you on the spot. Uh, That's okay. Alan, uh, thank you for having me on again. Thank you. For well, thank you, Mike. And thank you, Linda. You know, I, we should do this every week up until when the film premieres and whatever form it may wind up taking. Um, to everybody out there, I hope you've been encouraged and buoyed, particularly how we are really kicking ass right now on all fronts. Um, all the stuff we're hearing in the media now was because of us, this group, all the dialogue about student loan cancellation by executive order started right here. So this is not the time to sit back and eat popcorn. I think we're this, is, this is the time to get off your couch and help us. And we can get this over the finish line. Um, so I'll be back this weekend. Check back frequently. Um, we're going to do this again, maybe next, hopefully next Friday. Um, I'm up for it. Well, let's, let's bring somebody new on each week, Alan. Sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, and thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Linda. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. Let's make this the next week, the best week again for this uh, fight.